Welcome to another study of God's Word. In this sermon, we're going to be exploring the biblical theme, the name above every name, looking specifically at the text of Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. This passage may be a part of a hymn that Paul used that he included in his letter to the Philippians to speak of the exalted name of Jesus. The passage in Philippians 2 actually begins shortly after verse 5, verse 6, let this mind be in you, have this mind among yourselves, which was in Christ Jesus, and then in verse 6, the description of Jesus which may be a part, as I mentioned, of a song or of a first century poem. Though he was in the form of God, did not count equality with God a thing to be grasped, emptied himself, taking the form of a servant, being born in likeness as a human being, he was found in human form, humbled himself, became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. And then our text, therefore, God has highly exalted him and bestowed on him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. I think as we read that text in Philippians chapter two, in my experience in the church, many times we fail to make the connection with the passage of Matthew chapter 1, verse 21, for example, the name of Jesus, the instruction that Joseph received from the angel, you shall call his name Jesus, or he will save his people from their sins. We're talking about the same idea, the same concept, the name of Jesus, the exalted name of Jesus, the name that God gave him, a name above every name that every knee should bow, every tongue confess, the instruction that God gave Joseph through the angel. You shall call his name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. But that's not the first time that we've seen a reference to the name of Jesus. As we study today, the name above every name, as we think about the importance of the name of Jesus, I want to mention five things. First is that the name of Jesus, the name of a person, is a declaration of identity and nature. We may see that less in our own experience with names in our first names, although very early on, my mother wanted to make certain I knew what my name, Robert, meant in its origins, but especially in our surname we see something of who we are. We see our identity. We see that we're part of a certain family. We have a certain heritage. We have a certain history. We identify with certain people that were a part of history. We can trace our lineage. We can go back with our ancestry. We can see who it is that we are related to. We see that also biblically, that the name of a person is a declaration of identity and nature. Think with me about a passage that's related to the Matthew 121 passage, that is the story of the nativity, of the coming of Jesus, the incarnation, thinking about the prophecy of Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6. For us, to us a child is born, to us a son is given, the government shall be on his shoulder, and his name, singular, shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. How can the name of Jesus be Everlasting Father? The point is these are not names of Jesus, plural. This is a declaration of who he is, that he identifies with Mighty God, Everlasting Father, that he is himself Prince of Peace. There's a similar kind of thing that happens in the Great Commission in Matthew chapter 28. When the Bible says that you are to go, therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name, singular, of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. One name, singular, 
name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Other passages say that one is to be baptized in the name of Jesus. People are fond of asking, well, which one? My response is, well, both of them, because we're talking about one name, one identity, one nature. So first of all, the name of Jesus is a declaration of who he is, not only that he is Savior, but that he is very Son of God. That's the passage in Philippians chapter 2 with which we began that as Jesus receives the exalted name that is above every name, that every knee should bow, that every tongue should confess, what they confess is that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father, that Jesus is the anointed Christ, that Jesus is the one who as Lord identifies with Yahweh God of the Old Testament. So the name of Jesus has tremendous importance. A second thing we could note about the name of Jesus is that his name is a saving name. The name of Jesus is a declaration of salvation. As the angel told Joseph again, thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. Matthew will go on and say that Jesus came teaching, preaching, and healing. But Jesus came that the harvest might be reaped. Jesus came that souls might be saved. In Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, very early on in the experience of the primitive church, the Bible says, neither is there, is there salvation in any other name, for there is no other name given under heaven among us whereby we can be saved, must be saved, the King James Version. So Jesus comes as Savior. One of the great stories of church history is the story of an English bartender who heard the story of Jesus, accepted the story, and it changed his life. This English bartender in his previous life cared little for the well-being of others, cared mostly for their money. But when he heard the message of Jesus, when he accepted the story of Jesus, when he saw the power of the name of Jesus, he came to the U.S. preaching. And as a result of his preaching, over 70,000 people came to Jesus. His name, George Whitfield. We, in the same way, when we are drawn to the Lamb of God, and repent of our sins, and put our trust in the name of Jesus, and are baptized in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, we declare who Jesus is, that we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, the confession of the eunuch in Acts chapter 8. The name of Jesus is a name that declares salvation. The blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, cleanses us from all sin. 1 John chapter 1 and verse 7. A third thing we note is that the name of Jesus is a comforting name. Jesus told his disciples, do not let your hearts be troubled, neither be afraid. John chapter 14, verse 27. Where shall we go when we need comfort? In times of uncertainty, in times of difficulty, in times of fear, in times of death, we feel the touch of Jesus and we recognize the power of Jesus' name because we see the nature of Jesus, the ministry of Jesus. We see the character. We see the love of God shed abroad in our hearts. We come to know the love of God because of Jesus. God sent his son to demonstrate his love so that we might know love. That's not only the passage of John 3.16, it's also repeated in 1 John chapter 3, 1 John chapter 4. God is love. We come to know love because God loved us and he loved us in such a way that he causes us to want to express that love to others. These are words of comfort. When no one else knows your name, no one else remembers your name, when you are, and I are long gone from this earth, Jesus will remember. 
our names are written. Our names are written in the Lamb's Book of Life. So the name of Jesus is, for me, a comforting name. I love hearing the name of Jesus. I love to sing the name of Jesus. Another thing that the text says is that the name of Jesus is an exalted name. Jesus was given a name above every name, that at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. I am intrigued by how much people honor names. They love to drop names, someone we may know or someone we've interacted with or someone with whom we've had a relationship. Names are important. Names are important in history. Alexander the Great, Caesar, Napoleon. But when you think about names that are glorious, names that represent greatness and majesty, that's the name of Jesus, the exalted name that is above every name. The final thing I want to say is that biblically, the name of Jesus alters eternity because the name of Jesus declares who he is and speaks salvation, and provides comfort, and is a name that demands our worship and our adoration, the name of Jesus will alter eternity. When Jesus comes again, his face brighter than the sun, his hand holding the scepter of power, showing his dominion, and every knee bows and every tongue confesses, the words of that song, all hail the power of Jesus' name. Let angels prostrate fall. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Those songs that we sing, so powerful, so, so special. Oh, how sweet the name of Jesus. Jesus, every day the same. Let all the saints proclaim the name of Jesus. Love to tell the story. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. At this season, I've prepared this lesson during the month of December, leading up to Christmas, leading up to the holiday season, thinking about the name above every name, thinking about Jesus, the name that means Savior. I hope that you'll think about, pray about the name of Jesus. Think about what it means for us to be able to worship him, to follow him, to obey him. Such a precious name, the name above every name, that name of Jesus, every knee should bow and every tongue confess. These declarations today, Jesus Christ, by his very name, declares his identity as Son of God. That name is a saving name. It is a comforting name. It is an exalted name. It is an eternal name. May it make a difference in your eternity and in my eternity as we seek to follow him more closely each day of our lives. May you be blessed by this study. If I can in any way assist in your obedience to the name of Jesus Christ, no other name given under heaven, whereby we might be saved. Unto us, a child is born. Unto us, a son is given. And his name, wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting father, prince of peace. The name of Jesus, the name of Savior, May God bless us as we seek to serve him.